of his selection, John Mitchell appeared to be going into re a Republican administration. Unlike Matt Gates, John Mitchell was not under an ethics investigation when he was Mitchell had never been the subject of a federal criminal investigation of sex trafficking as Matt Gates was. John Mitchell as Matt Gates was. As shocked as Washington was yesterday with the Trump choice of a Fox weekend host for Secretary even greater today, including among Republicans, there is no Republican member of the House of Representatives who is hated and I more Republican members than Matt Gates. Here's the reaction of Republican Congressman Max Miller. Uh, I believe that the president is probably rewarding him for being such a lo loyal soldier to the president. But the president is smart and Gates will never get confirmed by the Senate. Mr. Gates breaks things to breaks things. And then once he breaks it, he breaks it even more. And that is somebody who should not. Kevin McCarthy, who was driven out of the speakership by Matt Gates, said this. I'll give you the truth why I'm not. A member of Congress wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17 year old. The Democrats in the Senate will doubt out wantonness at Matt Gates' Senate confirmation hearing. The Senate confirmation hearing for Attorney General will be run by the 91-year-old chairman, new Chuck Grassley, who has become a rubber stamp for all things Trump in the Senate. But Matt Gates is already in trouble trying to get a majority vote. Sam Murkowski telling NBC News today, it will be a significant challenge for Gates to win enough votes to be confirmed. I don't think it's a serious no, that's Lisa Murkowski's view, Murkowski said. He's got his work cut out for him, added Senator Joni Ernst, Republican of Iowa. Senator John Cornyn, any nominee by the president, seriously, but we also have a constitutional responsibility. Senator Susan Collins, Republican of Maine, sounded a note of skepticism, obviously, whomever he wishes, but I'm certain that there will be a lot of questions, she said. Collins said the ethics probe will be one of because, as I understand it, there's an active investigation by the House Ethics Committee. Well, when the senator was saying that, but hours later, that investigation was ended by Matt Gates' resignation. A year ago, the world is not ready for an attorney general, Matt Gates. You never know, David. It may be an attorney general, Matt Gates, down I who like will that. be there to actually enforce the law and provide the accountability, not just the vision, but the actual accountability, the people that are sending you those just and constitutional republic. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. And I like that. I like that. Attorney General Matt Gates. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we certainly sent a confirmation wouldn't be. Punchbowl News is reporting tonight that the House Ethics Committee was going to vote on Friday, releasing a report of its investigation of Matt Gates. That vote might never take place, and that report might never be seen. But between every reporter in Washington will be trying to get a leaked copy of that report to protect Matt Gates. Every will have to defend suppressing that ethics committee report. Every Republican senator who wants to vote for Matt Gates's confirmation pressing that ethics report about Matt Gates. Every Republican senator will have to insist that they want less Donald Trump's nominee for attorney general than is available. The Trump team has said that they want to abolish background check in the Trump administration. Now we know why. In a normal investigation, of a nominee for attorney general, the background check is done by doing a background check of their future boss. The FBI already knows a lot about Matt Gates from its criminal investigation serving time for sex trafficking. That information should be included in the FBI's background report and a Judiciary Committee. Now we know why Donald Trump said the other day he wants to bypass the confirmation process for his nominees. Donald Trump wants nominees like Matt Gates to take their positions in the administration through recess appointments. A recess appointment is possible in recess for at least 10 days, then in the event of what's supposed to be an emergency vacancy that has to be filled without Senate confirmation. That appointment is only good for approximately 18 months to a maximum of two years until the next Congress was promised. A recess appointment before he was publicly chosen by Senator Rick Scott, one of the candidates for Republican Majority Leader of the Senate. Rick Scott was the only one of the three candidates who immediately said, quote, 100 percent agree to, to Donald Trump's demand for recess appointments. Rick Scott came in last today in the closed door secret elector in which only Republican senators voted. John Thune, the heir apparent of Mitch McConnell, 
from Majority Leader by Republicans in sharp and full defiance of Elon Musk. He's never expressed a view on Senate leadership elections before, said Rick Scott for Majority Leader, exclamation point. He or Thune is the top choice for Democrats. He was right about Senator Thune. Most Democratic senators would as the Republican leader. Here's Democratic Senator Mark Warner today. I've worked with John Thune on a lot of things, even like the, um, again, I don't agree with John Thune on everything, and, and he's, you're going to have to work, he's got a, a challenge to work with the president-elect, and John Thune is, you know, he's partisan, but he's, he's always a decent guy. And that, I think, kind of decency is something that um, I imagine will be tested, uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him. So obvious, lost big time today. Elon Musk lobbied Republicans in the Senate on majority leader, lost. His candidate came in last out of the three candidates. And Matt Gates's chance of getting a recess appointment, 100% with Rick Scott, to no better than 50% with John Thune as Senate Majority Leader. Weak as Rick Scott and bend to every Trump demand. But as of tonight, we know two things about the incoming Senate Majority Leader. John Thune, like Matt Gates, to get a recess appointment. And he doesn't want Matt Gates to become Attorney General. He's not going to say that is obvious about a senator like John Thune. That doesn't mean John Thune won't end up voting for Matt Gates' confirmation. John Thune might, just might, try to work the secret magic that a majority leader can use to slow down a nomination or kill a nominee. Prince being at the scene of the crime. Majority leaders have many ways of doing that invisibly. Second impeachment trial, Senator Thune said, my vote to acquit should not be viewed as exoneration for his conduct on January 6th, weeks leading up to it. What former President Trump did to undermine faith in our election system and disrupt the peaceful vote. But he is no longer president. The Constitution is clear that the primary purpose of impeachment is removal from office, and that's what I believe. Reports are now emerging from Trump world about the predictable tensions with Elon Musk. NBC News reports views about Trump's second term, that he's stepping on the toes of Trump's transition team and maybe overstaying his welcome at Mar-a-Lago. According to he's behaving as if he's a co-president and making sure everyone knows it, one of the people said of Musk. Politico reports he's been hanging around Mar-a-Lago, sidling into high-level transition meetings and giving unsolicited feedback on Trump's personnel decisions. His britches, one insider tells Playbook, Trump, for his part, doesn't seem to mind. Relishing the attention he's getting from the rich. There was even talk of trying to have Elon Musk join the meeting that Donald Trump had today with President Biden, in which incoming White House Chief of Staff Susie Wiles also joined the discussion after that one-on-one -on -one in the Oval Office. Musk meeting. But that's the only meeting Elon Musk seems to have been barred from so far. Donald Trump lets... The way President Franklin Delano Roosevelt let his little dog follow, follow him around, all over the world, edges across oceans. Donald and Elon's excellent adventure makes perfect sense for Donald, who all, with the richest person in the world beside him, Donald Trump need never talk to another banker in his life. All of Donald, Elon at any moment. And for Donald, there is the pleasure of putting on public display the richest utter subservience to Donald Trump. In public, Donald Trump is Elon's daddy and of Trump's son, a status that allows him to stand in front of Eric in the family photograph. He understands nothing about government. He might not understand how fake the fake job is that Donald Trump gave him yesterday when he told Elon Musk he would be of government waste. Donald Trump gave Elon Musk the power to do absolutely nothing on Musk, another lobbyist with Congress. If Elon Musk finds something that he thinks is waste in government, House and Senate committees of jurisdiction, that they vote to cut that spending. But if they don't vote to cut, it will continue forever. And Elon Musk better not recommend cutting any... Texas, say, or 
in Florida or in any Republican state. No power in the government at all. Elon Musk has no power over spending and has only Congress does. And so Elon Musk's fake job on the Trump team is to be a and Elon Musk will have to convince both the House and Senate to agree to vote on spending cuts that and we saw Elon Musk's power today as a lobbyist in the United States Senate. He lost very badly. In the very first vote by Republican senators, they said, we don't want what Elon Musk is. Rick Scott, the Republican senator who said he wanted to cut Social Security and Medicare. When Elon Musk recommended to the Senate, the Senate Finance Committee won't even have a hearing on it, never mind a vote on it. Elon Musk was humiliated. His first big power play in the United States Senate, Elon Musk was crushed and humiliated. And he was who must, must, at some point, humiliate everyone around him.